If you've been lucky enough to stumble across this plumberparts.co.uk video, it's not all about underfloor heating. So subscribe if you want to see the myriad of plumbing disasters photos that we get sent in every week and review. And also, if you want to join our Facebook and Twitter, then you'll be welcome there as well. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and remember everyone, to hold tight! Plumberparts.co.uk Honest reviews and advice. Hold tight and welcome to today's plumberparts.co.uk video. This is the second part of a series of films that we are doing about an underfloor heating system that we're installing at my poor house behind us. In the first video we showed you how the wave-in manifold works, which is the particular manifold that we're fitting on this job. Uh, and we also showed you how we decided where we were going to site the manifold, which was kind of a difficult one. I mean, every job is different. And, uh, you know, so we had a bit of trouble figuring out where we were going to put it. Uh, but we figure that one out now. Um, and then we showed you also how to install the actual pipework, which was a stapled system, to our Celatex or our Kinspan floor insulation. After that, there's going to be a 75mm screed put over the top of all that, but that'll be done later on. The next bit that I'm going to show you is actually us piping up the manifold into the heating system and also showing you how to pipe up the loops, the individual loops that you've got into the manifold. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and if you need any more help, then please do let us know through those social media channels. Uh, we post loads of photos every week and loads of videos as well. Stuff like that, anything you've got, send it to us and we will send it out to the plumbing fraternity, the world. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video and remember everyone to hold tight. So as you can see, it's not really position A when it comes to where you'd actually usually install a manifold, but we covered that, as I said, in the video beforehand. So what I've got to do now is I've got my heating flow and return here. That's my flow pipe and that's my return pipe. They've got to go into these two valves just here. Uh, so your flow will go into there and your return will go into there. And then we've got our two loops that need to go into our two manifolds just here. Uh, it's very important as well, so that our flow loop goes out there and our return loop comes back up there. Because I've only got two loops and they're both to the same room, it's really simple for me to find out which one's which. I mean, really, if I just blow down that one there, I can feel air come out of that one, so I know that I've got my flow and return loop there. And then obviously, with, with a bit of uh, you know detective work, I know that that's the other two loops I've got. If you're installing in a really, really big house, you know, there's different rooms and all that, you'll have to tape up and mark out which returns and flows go to which, okay? So then you'll know later on, and then you can actually mark the manifolds accordingly at the end of the job. So what I'm gonna do, because at the moment, that this job is a bit of a nightmare in here really there's been a few different plumbers coming here over the years and do different random bits and bobs so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna board across the back here try and make this look as nice and as aesthetically pleasing as possible um, so hopefully once we've got it all piped up and done it looks a little bit like this and as you can see we've made the best of a pretty bad situation but we've managed to get this system in making it look nice with another little bit of plywood across the back there gives the whole installation a nice neat appearance and also if you look closely you can see that we've hidden most of our wires that lead to our head actuators and to our pump and also to our two port valve uh, they're all hidden away behind there they can't get pulled about or anything and as you can also see we've got our control wiring center in there now so now let's have a closer look at the system and show you how it works and also I'll show you the screen that's been in for about six weeks. So now that we've got all this installed, we can have a really good look about how these systems actually work and also how the various components communicate with each other to tell the system to run or to not run. Firstly, we've got our flow coming in from the boiler here. Now, as we knew from earlier on, our flow will also go off up to the other services in the system, like the hot water tank and also the radiators that are also upstairs in the house. And what happens is the hot water will come here, come through this two port valve when our thermostat is calling for underfloor heating, and then it will come up, be sucked up through this pump here and then round and down off to these two flows, okay? That will go off to those loops that are in the floor. Now, the electrical sequence for how this works is, is the thermostat in the room will prove, it will say I want heat, or the programmer and the thermostat will say we want heat at the moment, and then that sends a live supply to this valve here. And when that valve opens, there's a micro switch that clicks and then sends a separate live supply over to this pump to say I'm open, I want to come on now, and it also sends a live supply to the boiler as well to say we're open, we're ready for business, get us some heat coming through, and that pump's also going to go, oh my god, let's run! And that's what happens basically. So this hot water then will be sucked through here and then this pump basically circulates around and around and around this area here like so. Now, 
As we said earlier on, different floor makes need different types of temperature. So low build waving underfloor heating, which is used a lot for, um, say, timber floors, requires a slightly higher amount of heat going through those pipes. And what we can do is we can set the heat going through the underfloor heating using this here, which looks very similar to a radiator TRV. Now, because what we've got here is a 75 millimeter screed, uh, screeded floors don't need to be as hot as other floors. I mean, most people run them at 45 degrees, but I'm gonna run this at 50 degrees. Now, what we do is we'll use this gauge up here to, dis to detect how much hot water is actually going through the system. Now we use this gauge here to really judge the return temperature. Uh, it gives you a good idea as to whether the system's working properly or not and it's more of a kind of diagnostic thing for if there's any problems. Well that's what I tend to use that gauge for and also obviously it's got our pressure on there as well so we can tell the system pressure that's going into the manifold. So what happens when this system's operational and this is all being called to run? Now we're introducing 80 degree or 75 degree water from the boiler here and what's happening is is that's getting mixed with the cold water that's going through here as this senses and says well there's lots of hot water coming in here what it's going to do is when it's in normal operation straight away it's going to run water through there and straight back down the return off to the boiler now as it gets more comfortable with the temperature that's going through the underfloor heating system and say it's asking for 45 degrees this valve is going to shut the amount of water coming in from the boiler there and actually just create an almost a sealed loop from the rest of the heating system. Uh, and then every so often, obviously, as the heat dissipates through the floor and into the room, it'll allow a trickle of hot water to come through here and keep that temperature at a nice steady 45 degrees or whatever you've set it at. So when you commission one of these systems, you can basically turn this down to two, get the boiler so it's fully up to temperature and so then you know you're introducing the hottest amount of water possible and then just gently crank this open until you get a nice steady temperature through here, what you're looking for. Now often you'll notice with underfloor heating systems that the motorized heads that we've got here don't just clank open straight away similar to the two port valve that's next to me. What they do is they have a low voltage going into them so they open very very slowly so you need to be quite patient when it comes to these opening up. Um, I mean the waving ones we've got here can take anywhere up to about 10 minutes to fully open. So what we're going to do now is run this system for you. The screed has been down for six weeks now so we don't have to wait. I mean usually it's 21 days for the actual screed to go off depending on how thick it is um, and that is basically to stop it from cracking or if there's any problems afterwards when you when you basically turn the hot water on if it's still a green screed it can cause problems later on in the job and be a whole load of hassle so what I'm going to do now is get in our wireless stat and turn this system on and then you can see how it all works so here's our wireless stat here uh, what I'm going to do is just hold down this button here so then we can select where the manual is on we go right, we want manual on, so we can hold that down there, and then that's going to be happy. So now we can actually manually turn up, and you should see in the background that our system lights up and comes on. So that's calling now. Right, so this valve has now opened up. And there you go, that micro switch is now proved, and that's telling the pump to come on, so our pump's now running. So now let's have a quite closer look at our actuators, which are still closed and you should see that these slowly open up as well. So now we can see how slowly these actually open up. When these are both fully open, you'll see the whites of their eyes. Um, I mean, basically it's just the white plastic bits around here as they open up. Now, very important to have a look at is the actual flow parts just up here. This is basically how you can set up and balance your system. So that's shut. You'll notice there's a small dial just on there like so. As you can see there, we've got that system, just that loop there set to about five and a half. So you can set it to one, two, three, four, five, all the way around to 11, which if you ask me is a spinal tap joke. And basically we're gonna set this on five, so we pop that down there like that, and it's still shut. But what it does, it actually stops you from opening it all the way. So if we go around to here, we can open this up now, and that stops on that stopper there, and that's how that denotes which way it opens. So this one is just a little bit more open because it's just one loop down, so that's set to six. As you go around here, you'll see that that stopper is just hit on there like that. We go above, you can see that they're both hit on their stoppers. So going back down, you can see, still see that these still haven't really fully opened up yet. And also our temperature is still hovering at a very sort of lacklustre, late 20 degrees C. If I feel the pipe that's here, there's not a lot of heat coming through yet from the boiler because these haven't fully opened up yet. So at the moment, the system's still dormant. You're not gonna feel loads of hot water coming through here straight away. Right, so now this is starting to open up a little bit. We should see 
but our temperature here starts to creep up. So yeah, that's starting to come up now. There we go, it's rising nicely. And that's all because that is now starting to open up. So what I'm doing is just shutting this valve here, just like so, you just shut that. And as you can see, what that's doing now is that's shutting off the hot water that's coming in from our boiler and turning this into a loop. So the cold water coming back from the screed and the underfloor heating is cooling off at the moment. So what we're gonna do, we wanna get that a little bit hotter, don't we? So we want to introduce a little bit more water. So we're just gonna turn that open a notch and then just watch this come up. So it's nicely coming up again. Probably gonna go one, one more notch here. That's coming up nicely. And as you can see now, both our heads are nicely open as well. So now we've got the system fully running. We've got a flow temperature going around at about 45 degrees. If I want to get that any hotter, I can just whack that open like that. And we'll see that this dial here should start to go up again. So look, that's going up to 50 now, it's creeping up. The temperature on the returns is slowly starting to come up as well. That's sitting at about 30 degrees. And you should really have about a 10 to 12 degree differential uh, between the flow and return. And then you know you're getting the water to go through at the right rate. There's no point flying burning hot water through all the time because that makes the system sort of inefficient. So a lot of you may ask, why have I put a two port valve on here when, when this pump isn't going and that valve is going there, uh, nothing's gonna be going around the system? Well, mainly I find that uh, sometimes you can get, I mean, there is another pump on the heating system here, which is in the airing cupboard, and when that cuts in with the boiler and this isn't calling, say there wasn't a two port valve here, this could, if this valve was set in a certain position, could almost act like a bypass. It could run around there a little bit. So it's really handy just to pop a little two port valve on there, zone it off properly, and it gives you a little bit more control over the heating system and makes it more efficient. Also, when it comes to our motorized heads, when, it, when the system's been switched off, they can still take quite a while to shut down as well. So with these sorts of systems, it's all about patience, okay? In the words of Gary Barlow, have a little patience. Oh yeah. Uh, and yeah, so I'm really happy with how this system's working at the moment. Um, we have actually run it a few times over the last couple of days as well to make sure that it gets up to temperature. And I can tell you now that Big G the cat absolutely loves it he is in like all sorts of pleasure he lays on the underfloor and he's like Mrah! i can't believe what you've done here it is amazing let's have a quick look at the kitchen as well and you can see the screen and also see why we put in the blue sticky mesh so here we are, as you remember from the last video, uh, you saw that we were stapling down all our underfloor heating, ready for our screed to go in. So let's have a closer look at the outside insulation that we put around the screed. So here you can see our small piece of insulation as well that we've run around the outside. As we showed you, waving at them so they can be cut off at certain heights. Um, so they're really, really versatile for different depths of screed. Now it's very important you put these in because they stop any heat being transmitted into the wall and then off to atmosphere which will make the system you know not as efficient as it could be but also if there's any expansion that needs to be taken up when you're actually turning this on for the first time if there's anything that needs to be done this will take up that expansion as well so it's really really important you put that in it's not just some gimmick that they send out with the underfloor heating it's got a very very important role in this job. So there's our underfloor now. If you wait about half an hour, I guarantee you Mr. G will be out here getting his belly scrubs on his nice hot floor. <laughs> so there you go. As you can see, we are slowly getting there when it comes to getting this kitchen done. Hopefully I won't be divorced by the time it's finished and we'll be selling the house to split it 50-50. I hope you enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful and informative. Please follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Above all, it's so important that you subscribe. Okay, you can follow us on Facebook by clicking on the link that's appearing now. It's a great place to be. You guys send us loads of photos and videos and we use them in our weekly Ask the Plumber videos and plumbing disasters as well. So hopefully this isn't just gonna be one video that you've watched here, but hopefully you'll sign up to Plumber Parts and realize that it's a bit of fun as well. If you need any more help or any more information, please comment in the comment section below or follow us on Facebook and Twitter, like I said, and ask us there. We're gonna be doing more videos on this particular install pretty soon as well. We're gonna show you how to set up the waving programmer because that can be quite difficult. And also we're going to look through schematically in front of that manifold in there how the system works when it's in on or off operation, which will give you a bit of an extra idea of what to do. So just pop over to our YouTube channel and you should find those videos there in the next week or two. Anyway, I hope you come back and all the stuff and all the scrubs and all the rubs. If I can find Mr. G, I'm going to bring him down here and put him on his lovely bit of underfloor heating. He will not be sorry. And I'll see you in next week's video. Remember everyone, what have you got to do? especially now the summer's gone and I've just got back from holiday and i am proper got holiday blues. You've got to hold tight, all right? So remember everyone, to hold tight. See you later.
plumberparts.co.uk. Honest reviews and advice. You impressed by the underfloor heating, George? Oi, George! George, are you impressed by the underfloor heating? Because it looks like your bum likes it a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, belly scrubs. Belly scrubs. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow.